Welcome back, everybody, to part two of our series where we are finally building our trading strategy and then leveraging our Python trading robot library to execute that strategy. So in the previous video, we gave more of a high level overview about the project, certain requirements that we need to think through ranging from data all the way to order execution to the time of day. And we talked through some of the challenges that we might encounter and how we can possibly overcome some of those challenges and things like that. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're now going to shift gears a little bit. Uh, we're going to show you how to clone the repo to your local system from GitHub. We will also talk a little bit through the file structure, some of the common things that you're going to have to do when you first download it. And then we will start writing the code to initialize the robot object. And probably at that point, I'm probably going to have to cut off the video just because it's going to get a little bit long. But I would say at this point, it's cloning the repo, walking through the files, and then also initializing the robot object. So let's get started. All righty, what we're going to be doing first is I'm going to be opening up Visual Studio Code. I am assuming that you have Visual Studio Code on your system. It's a nice lightweight editor. I would highly recommend you do it. So I'm going to open up a new window of Visual Studio Code. I'm going to expand it right over here. And then the first thing that we're going to do is if you notice right here on the left hand side, these are kind of different extensions. There is one for the source control pane. So if you click that, you then get two options. You can either open an existing repository on your system, or you can clone an existing repository from GitHub. Now, currently I do have my Python trading robot on GitHub, so we're going to be cloning it. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the clone repository button. You need to provide the URL of the repository. So in this situation, I'm going to shift over to uh, GitHub. And if you haven't already, I would actually recommend that you follow me on GitHub. I have like 20 plus <laughs> repositories here. So um, I always kind of try to put the top ones here. But if you go to my main page, you'll notice there's like a much more right over here. So what we're going to do from here is if you look, I think it's probably going to be the third one on yours. You'll notice that there's Python trading robot. So you would just click that. And you just want to make sure it's a read one one nine two and then it's going to be python trading robot so to get the url it's pretty easy you just go over to your code button click it and then you can say on the https you would just click the little clipboard icon that's going to store the url on the clipboard we're going to jump back to visual studio code do control v you can now see that the url is in the input box press enter now you're going to be prompted for a location to clone the repository. You can put it anywhere. I'm just going to put it on my desktop just because it's easy. And then it's going to prompt you if you'd like to open it. We're going to just say yes. And now we should see the repository in our wonderful Visual Studio Code window. Now from here, let's start exploring some of the folders and files inside of it. Some are more important than other ones. Uh, two unimportant ones, so they're kind of just there in case you need them. Uh, one is GitHub. Don't Completely disregard that one. You don't care about that one. Docs, these are just notes that I might put in there. Some are blank. Some actually have contents of one for the strategy we're about to cover. Then there's the data folder. So this is just a little folder uh, in case you need to store data as you're trading or something like that. You can just put it into this folder and it's already kind of set up for you. If you need any unit testing, uh, I have some of that here for you as well. Might not have all of it, but I try to put as much in there as I could at this point. Some samples, samples are great. <laughs> so if you need any samples on how to use or leverage the code, it's in here as well. Uh, there's also some order responses, just different things in here uh, in case you need just like kind of samples that are right there. Uh, there's also a readme file. I would highly recommend that you read through it first just so that way you kind of understand uh, the whole library, how it's working and, and stuff like that, especially things like usage. You wanna make sure that you're using the robot appropriately. Uh, and then we have a setup.py file. So if you plan to use this particular library across different projects, but you still want to be able to modify the underlying code, then you can do what is called a 
local install or they call it like a developmental install. Uh, basically, you create a link to this package inside your local system, but you can modify the code and then those changes are immediately reflected uh, across your system. So it's really nice if you plan to modify the code yourself. We'll walk through how to do a local install once we're done exploring everything. There's also a config folder. I get questions about this all the time. You don't technically need a config folder, but when I'm recording videos, obviously I don't want people to see sensitive information. So this is where I just have templates where you can store that in a file and then read that file directly into your code when necessary. Um, I will say that if you're planning to use it across multiple projects or you want to do like web based and other stuff, you might want to look at an actual like web based service like Microsoft Azure Key Vault. The only reason I say that is it keeps it in one central location, which you can easily access through their API. But more importantly, it's secure. So they have like all sorts of different encryptions that you can use and it makes it easy to store sensitive information. But if you need to leverage it in different applications, it's pretty straightforward to go. So the important thing that you want to know about the right config file is the only things that you need to change is this one, this one, this one, and this one. So you want to put in the actual information. Then you would run it. So you would just do run Python file and terminal. And then you're going to see a file with the output. Uh, obviously, you would see your actual account information. Now, I already have it in the other folder that I have it in here. So I'm going to copy it and then paste it in here just so that way I don't have to share anything again. Uh, ooh, not that. Not, not, not that. There we go. Uh, do note, I named my configs S at the end, not config. So uh, please note that if you do do this, you just want to make sure they're matching. OK, from here, let's do the developmental install. So you're going to do Control J to bring up your terminal. It's then going to be pip install hyphen E period. This will go through and install any dependencies necessary in order to run the Python robots. And so it's super quick. There's only like three or four dependencies. So at least beyond the standard library. So we can close out that. And then from here, we can actually start writing our code. So I'm going to close out this particular script. Then I'm going to do right click, new file. And then we'll call this strategy1.py. Then from here, we're going to start importing our libraries. The first one is going to be JSON. We're going to be working with JSON data at different points, and we might want to store it. So JSON is just going to allow us to easily format it and then dump it. Then from here, we're going to import pretty print. We're going to print a lot of data. It's going to be JSON formatted data. Pretty print just makes it look all pretty. I don't think we're going to use pandas, but I'm going to import it just to be safe for the time being. And then we're going to also do import operator. This will make a little bit more sense once we get to the indicator section. This allows us to compare different indicators. Then from here, we're going to do from date time, import date time. We're going to have to grab historical price. Part of that requires building date times that we can specify how far we want to look back. In order to calculate that how far back, we need time delta, time delta allows us to take a date time and either add time to it or take away time from it. So basically like adding and subtracting. We're going to be reading a config file. So we're going to import our config parser object. So it's going to be config parser. And now we're doing the specific imports related to the pi robot. So we're going to do from pi robot dot robot import the actual pi robot object. Then we're going to do from pi robot dot indicators import indicators then from pi robot dot trades import trade this is going to drive me crazy if i leave it like that i don't know why it has to be like small to big there's one more import that technically we have to do, but I'm not going to do it right now. We're going to wait until we actually get to the point that we need to import it. So from here, let's read that config file. Let's read the config file. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable, call it config. This is going to represent a new config parser object. 
That config parser object has a method called read. You just need to provide the file path of the config file that you want to read. In this case, I'm going to do configs.config.ini. Please note configs, and there's a config. So I'm loading for mine. You would do it a little bit different. You would do config, but I'm going to do configs. Then from here, we're going to read it. Uh, then we're going to uh, read the different values. So we're going to have one called client ID. This is going to be config.get. You provide the section and then you have the key that you want to read the value for. In this case, I have a key called client ID. It exists in the main section and it's going to have my client ID value. And I'm going to copy this a couple of times. The next one's going to be for the redirect URI. The next one is going to be for the credentials path. This is We'll explain what that is in a second. And then the final one will be for the account number. Again, it's gonna drive me crazy if they're not all in the same order. Okay, then we're gonna just change the different keys that we're reading. Redirect to URI, and then it's gonna be the account number. And then finally, the credentials underscore path, just like that. Okay. So we're going to read them in uh, just to kind of prove that it's doing what we wanted it to. Let's make sure that we can see one of them. Ah! What did I call it? Oh, JSON path. My bad. It's called JSON path. That's why I did that. Silly me. OK, so you can see that it's reading the value successfully. That's awesome. Let's do the next part, which is initialize the pi robot object. So we're going to do a new variable. We'll call it trading robot. This one is going to equal a new instance of the pi robot object. Has a few arguments we need to pass through. The first one is your client ID. The next one is your redirect URI. The next one will be uh, your credentials path. That obviously equals your credentials path. The next one is your trading account. That will equal your account number. Uh, this is just so it stores it when it builds orders and stuff like that. It can just easily um, put them into that order object. And then finally, probably the most important one is paper trading. For you, it should be true. For me, I'm going to do false only because I've tested it on my system. And I'm OK with the size of the position that it's taking, and I'm OK with the particular instrument that it's taking a position in. However, I want you to make sure it works on your system, and I want you to make sure you understand what is actually going on before you turn paper trading off. So for you, paper trading should be true. For me, it's going to be false. The difference for this one is if it's paper trading is set to true, it never actually submits the order to TD Ameritrade instead. What happens is it basically dumps the particular order to a JSON file so you can keep tabs of it. And that way you can determine at what price it got in and what price it got out. It's not going to be exact as if you had done an actual order, but it should get you pretty close to what you would imagine it to be. So again, not perfect, but at least it kind of gives us some mechanism to test out different aspects of our strategy. So that's now our trading robot. And then just to make sure that it's working, we're going to just do this so you can see a pi robot object. Now, depending on whether you're authenticated or not or whatever happens, you may be prompted with a URL. If you are prompted with a URL, all that means is you need to navigate to that URL and then go through the authentication process for TD Ameritrade. Now, if you are new to using the TD Ameritrade API, I would highly recommend you watch my series where I show you how to use the library only because it will help you walk through just common scenarios when it comes to authentication. Authentication is really important because that's how TD Ameritrade makes sure that you are the person that you say you are. So let's see what happens. 14, we'll close it here. Been long enough. All right, so in our next video, we're going to continue writing our script. Uh, we're going to show you how to define your trading symbol. We're going to show you how to define a position and then also grab the historical price 
for that particular position. And then we'll go through calculating the different indicators, leveraging that, and then creating a trade and then also putting it probably on a loop. I don't know if we'll get through all of that in the next video, but we'll try to get through as much as we can. So at this point, if you have any final questions, feel free to put them down in the comments below. Um, also, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. We always love new subscribers. Uh, otherwise, see you in video number three.